by this big story that kind of took over. Uh, and it's Roman Reigns cutting a promo after the show ended in Trenton, New Jersey, where he said that he's entering a new phase in his career. He said that he's only been to that venue a couple times in the last 10 years, and he doesn't know if he'll ever be back. Fightful, uh, our, our friend Sean Ross Sapp reported on Fightful Select, uh, WWE says Roman still figures into the plans for the foreseeable future. I Listen, you know what? I would have said the same thing if I was in Trenton, New Jersey. I don't want to come to this B city, this B state. How dare you? You know how many times Gorilla Monsoon main evented in Trenton? How dare you sully Trenton? Well, you know, the people, it's the state capital of New Jersey. So, you know, gives you that. It's not a good or a bad thing. It's just an actual fact. I think you should but go to every you? city in New Jersey. He goes to the Meadowlands. <laughs> this is the last time you'll see me in the Meadowlands. This is the last time you're going to see me in Trenton. Asbury He's Park? No way. Uh, no, this is, this is all interesting stuff. Uh... I was in Trenton, New Jersey for an event a couple of weeks ago, and I have to tell you, it was a very difficult drive. Uh, you know, do I personally think Roman is exiting? I don't think so. No. Uh, but maybe, you know, this is this is one of those things where, you know, they don't go to Trenton that often. He's thinking about, you know, in the next couple of years and, you know, what he's going to transition into. And is he going to be a full time Every night of, you know, that there's TV or house shows, is he going to be that guy or is he going to kind of transition into more like a special attraction type of main eventer for that company? That's, what do you think? That's kind of how I took it uh, once I read it and you process it. It's like th that's the tease. It's the, you're, you, oh, you guys, I'm above this. I'm above God level. I'm at, I'm at rock in O2 level. I'm at Austin in O2 level. I'm the undertaker. I am at another plane of existence in this industry. So you get to see me on my time. You will get to see me wrestle on the biggest platform with the news about WrestleMania being the second most watched thing in the history of Peacock. Um, you can use that because he was the main event and he walked out with the title. There's a lot of things within that. And also, how smart of it to do it on a house show the day before a pay-per-view oh, yeah. just right outside a major market. Yeah, because now you're going to be like, oh, what's going on? Maybe they tease something, you know, just outside <laughs> of a major market. Again, uh, smart guy. Uh, yeah. He knows what he's doing. I can't I don't see him leaving. No. Uh, I, I don't see WWE telling, you know, telling him or being okay with him kind of alluding that he's leaving if he was in that, no, in the, that way. They, you, you love it because... It gives every level of the business you're owning the conversation. And it also kind of asserts the fact that Roman is the guy in the business right now. I, He's the you guy. Can make an, He's the yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, you can make an argument for a few other people in this industry. Um, they are, you know, but right now, Roman Reigns is the guy. And ever since the advent of the, you know, since Luthez, there's been a guy in a company, a guy in a territory, whether it was Buddy Rogers, Bruno San Martino, Pedro Morales, you know, even going all the way down to this, the era of Cena, um, and now Roman Reigns. Like this, we are firmly entrenched in that era, and news like this solidifies that. Of course. So here's something, and and Doom Tribe in our chat room on YouTube. He said, the problem with WWE is that they've been sacrificing the entire roster to get Roman over and have nobody else. You know, I see, here's the thing, right? I disagree. I, I got to tell you, they they had to, I, first of all, I agree with what he's saying. They had to sacrifice majority of that roster to Roman. They sacrificed Edge, Brian Danielson. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, it, it's but almost, it worked. It's, it, it's endless, but it worked, right? The like problem, that's the thing is the problem for me is that they haven't created that other guy. It's not yeah. a matter of, you know, they're taking guys that are established and just Roman is decimating them. If that was the case, I would I would have a major problem, but I don't think they don't have that that babyface guy ready. They don't have you know that what top it is? guy. Do you know what it's the Bruno formula reversed? <laughs> it's a Bruno formula reverse. It's the Bruno formula reverse because yeah. it's just people building up to fight Roman and Roman staying alive. And you hear about the argument, and we heard this like when we were younger, the idea of wrestling fans, you know, of of hot potatoing belts, hot potatoing titles. That's something that was accused a lot in the early to mid two thousands, and 
this is the most dominant title reign we've seen in 15 years, uh, maybe 10, uh, since like the first true Cena reign. So I think this it, is more dominant than the Cena reign because you know what they did with Cena? They told you that he could lose, right? They, they, it, was, it, was, it was interesting. The booking was Cena can lose to this person. He's yeah. not better than this person. He's not stronger than this, than this person, but he perseveres because he's a good guy and good guys always yeah. win. With Roman, they've told you, no, nobody's on his level. These guys yeah. are nowhere near his level. So whatever happens, and I don't think the person that beats him should be a fluke win. I think it needs to be a legitimate, solid win. It, it's a Lesnar booking all over again. Uh, yeah, just it is. more matches. And the the problem is the follow through. Like that's the actual problem is they build up these guys like Cesaro and so many other people in his wake that they didn't they they got him to that point and then they didn't follow up to make him strong the baby face stronger on the other side. Yeah. Well, it's now now look at it this way, right? You, they have done over the last I want to say three weeks. They have done a decent job on TV telling you that there are opponents for Roman, right? Yeah. Drew. Great opponent for, for Roman, which I'm sure is going to happen. Uh, Randy, another fantastic opponent for, for Roman, which we really... I, I think this version of Randy and him could have a really hot program. And yeah. Matt Riddle, the wild card here. Yeah, I I think you have it. I think that's the actual batting order. And I think that they're starting to make the case for Cody Rhodes. I see a viable path for the pay-per-view in Cardiff or for, for SummerSlam to be... To be the title drop, and I think if it is if it is Cardiff, it'll probably be Drew McIntyre. Yeah, but Drew, Drew may be married Fury. to Tyson Fury. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I I could see I can see that match happening. That would probably be a huge that'd be a huge match for that. If you don't know about Tyson Fury's drawing power in the UK alone, oh, he might. um, yeah, he sold out Wembley Stadium fighting a guy in Dillian White who really isn't a top five heavyweight. Ninety two thousand people. Yeah. 92 93,000 people. Yeah. I I I don't know. I I think this 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 version of Roman has worked. Um but, you know, it, it's listen, you're a booker, right? You're a matchmaker. What happens when you have no opponents and now really your champion has all the titles? You <laughs> You basically find yourself in a position to where the next six months are going to be hell for you. No, no, 